I finally got my EOS M up and running with a smartphone as a monitor. This can pretty much work for any camera and that's what we're gonna look at right now. Hey guys, how's it going? Zeke here, hope you're all doing well, staying safe out there. With me right now, I've got the Canon EOS M and it's all hooked up to my smartphone, which is the Samsung S10 Plus. And as you can see, everything's working. There's no latency issues. I'm gonna go through the app that I'm using later in this video. We're gonna do a hands-on sort of tutorial video of what features that this app supports and what you can do. Uh, but right now, I'm gonna show you guys how to get started with this setup. So the first thing you need is a HDMI capture card. Now this thing cost me 10 bucks. In all honesty, I'd say go for something a bit more expensive, you know, say 20 bucks, 30 bucks and up. Uh, this thing has had a bit of issues in the 1080p raw mode of the Canon EOS M, but apart from that, it's been working fantastic on the A7S Mark II and the 5D Mark II raw. Everything has been working fine. Just the Canon EOS M 1080p mode, there's something going wrong. It's all blank and black, uh, but the other modes do work like 2.8K, 2.5K slow-mo. All the other stuff work, just not the 1080p mode. I have purchased another capture card, so hopefully that should work better. Uh, but from what I've heard, other people have been able to get that working, so that's good news. Now the capture card that I'm using runs at 2.0. It has an input max resolution of 3840 by 2160 at 30 hertz, and it outputs at full HD 1920 by 1080 at also 30 hertz. It supports up to 12-bit color, so you get nice vibrant colors coming out of your monitor. And one thing to note is that the HDMI cable that you use, it can't be 4K cable, so it has to be 1080p HD cable, and that would avoid some issues that you can face. So once you've got the capture card, then you get the respective HDMI cable, you connect these two together, get the other end and connect the HDMI cable to your camera. Now as you can see, this is a really long HDMI cable. I'd recommend getting a short one, around 15 centimeters or so, and that would save you from getting knots and stuff like that. So once you've connected your HDMI cable to your camera, the next part you will need is the OTG cable. So here it is right here, this is the OTG cable. And what you're gonna do is connect this end to your smartphone. Now I'm using the USB-C, this is for my Samsung S10 Plus. If you have an iPhone, then obviously you get an iPhone cable. So this is pretty much how you send the signals from your camera onto your smartphone. I've been testing it out in the field, I've got some fantastic shots for you. This is all shot via my smartphone as a monitor. And I have to say that I'm really pleased with the way that the monitor functions out in the field. I can see the screen and I was able to acquire focus nice and easy. All right, so now it's time to take a closer look at the app that I'm using as well as the settings. Let's go check it out. All right guys, so here I have the Canon EOS M and then you can see this little adapter on top. Now this is a smartphone clamp and you know, it can be adjusted to fit individual smartphones depending on the size that you have you know you can flip it forwards and backwards so if you're not using it you can flip your smartphone down so i think it's definitely handy um, to have a tiltable smartphone clamp so i'm in the app store and i've typed usb camera uh, you can type in usb camera pro just to get it straight away there's all these free versions so this is a free version but the problem with that is that it has ads so you want to go down to the pro version now this is the app that I use. Um, other people use other apps like CameraFi and stuff like that. Find one that works for you. I think that USB Camera Pro is a really good one. So once you've installed it, you're ready to go. Now when you plug in the USB, it will automatically detect that a cable has been attached and it will automatically load the app for you, which is really neat. And then just turn your device on and that should get it up and running. All right, so with Magic Lantern, you get a small screen, obviously. So if you tap onto the interface, you can pretty much stretch it out to your liking. And there you go, you can see all the functions there. You can see your FPS, your frame rate. You can see what bit you're shooting at. I'm shooting at 2.8K raw right now, 1 50th of a shutter, ISO 100, and I can monitor my audio. So everything's working, everything's fine, I can see the exposure. Obviously you can take these overlays off in the Magic Lantern menu, but yeah, this is really cool how you can pinch to zoom if you want to clarify your focus. I think it's a fantastic app and how they've gone about designing this thing. So let's go ahead, tap there. You can adjust the brightness of the interface. So the sharpness, the gamma, saturation, contrast, pretty much most of the things that you would see on typical monitors, budget ones especially. Uh, you can do zoom, exposure, and then your power line frequency. And then we go into devices and that will show which devices are connected to this app. So this is just to clarify if you're using multiple cams and stuff like that. And then if we go over here, 
you've got you know flip vertically horizontally and then enter background picture in background and click size now this is the thing some people have experienced lagginess on their monitors with this one I have no issues at all the latency is absolutely perfect it's spot on and you can change the frame rates so if you want more resolution on your monitor that means it's going to drop frames to around 10 frames per second at 30 frames per second i'm getting 720 by 480 and then at 25 frames per second i'm getting just a tad bit higher resolution i haven't had any issue focusing out in the field especially on a bright day this thing has worked absolutely fantastic and it also depends on the nits of your screen so 650 nits it's brightest day outside it's absolutely fine all right so let's go ahead and click record so again, I'm recording at 2.8K raw, and then you can see how long I'm recording for. So good stuff here. And then tap the interface to zoom in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. Now this is raw video, so it's gonna have a bit of lagness on the playback. This is typical with Magic Lantern raw cameras. And then there you go. So you can see your playback, and you can access everything that you would on the normal EOS M live view and skipping through the frames just over here. So there's no purple frames. Usually with normal monitors, I get purple dropped frames. On this, no dropped frames at all. Everything's working fantastic. Now let's go ahead and try other modes. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm shooting at 48 frames per second. Everything's working fine. There's no latency issues in this mode. And I've been shooting and testing out with it and no purple frames, no dropped frames. Everything's working fine. Not sure why the normal HD mode doesn't work, but it just may work for you if you have the right video capture card or the right cables. I think there's something to do with what I'm using. So I'll change a few things and let you guys know in the community tab or Facebook. So let's go ahead and click record. This is the 48 frames per second mode. I usually get around five seconds in this mode. So we'll see. All right, so I've extended the five seconds. Yep, so I got about 10 seconds and we'll go ahead and click play just to see if we have any dropped frames. All right, so here we are. This is playback in the 48 frames per second mode. We're going frame by frame and there are no dropped frames at all. This is fantastic. You know, with my normal monitors, sometimes I get dropped frames, but with the phone, everything's working fine. So that's good to know. If I can get the 1080 mode up and running, then I'm pretty much gonna just stay away from my monitors and use this phone because I think it's fantastic. Now, if you wanna skip going frame by frame, just press all and that will skip some frames, just so you go quickly through the frames. All right, so no dropped frames, we can get playback perfectly, and everything is working fine. All right, so we know that all the modes work, except for the HD modes. All right, so in the settings of this app, you can pretty much get general settings, and you can do forced landscape mode, which is what I'm using, full screen when startup, and there's a whole heap of settings that you can use if you want to use it as security cameras, or webcams, and stuff like that. I'm not really into that stuff, I just want it to use for Magic Lantern, all that monitoring stuff. And if we go down here, you can limit your videos to four gig file size and then change your video aspect ratio on the actual interface, which is really cool. You can save your videos to an SD card, USB disc, etc. Enable microphone, stereo, you got H.264 bypass. You have all these different settings that you can enable, which is really cool. Reset resolution, audio playback, and then obviously you can change your frequency. So you got PAL, PAL60, PAL-M, SE cam, which detects automatically. Now all these things are pretty much for your normal H.264 cameras. They're not really for Magic Lantern RAW, so just keep that in mind. It's got the 5D Mark II here, and it's got Magic Lantern loaded onto it. So you can see there is the app again, and everything's working absolutely fine. So let's go ahead and see how it runs with the 5D Mark II. So tap on the screen to enter the full screen, and then just set it up to your liking. All right, so here we have it up and running. I'm just going to enter the Magic Lantern menu and show you guys what settings I'm on. So now I'm in raw video. This is the standard raw recording mode and that's the max resolution you can have. So 1880 by 1050 at 23.976. Alright, so from what we can see it's recording fine. Um, there is sadly no playback on the 5D Mark II with the latest builds. If you want playback in the 5D Mark II in Magic Lantern Raw, you would have to get the older builds which are on the Magic Lantern website. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. But from what I can see, it works fantastic. I'm going to test the latency. And it appears to be working fine. All right, so enter the Magic Lantern menu again. And now if we go all the way down to find the clear overlays, which is just over here, enable that. So you can enable when recording or pretty much always. So we'll do always. 
And then look at that, you get no grids, no information on display. I'm using a zoomed lens so I can't really focus close, but I mean, you know, you got no information there. So if that's what you want, then obviously you select clear overlays. But apart from this, I'd pr probably keep it on. And there you go guys, everything's working fine on the 5D Mark II. So thanks guys for watching, hope you got something in this video. Hopefully it's helped you out in some way. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll surely see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.